And I figured it out. I wrote a letter to the Chief of Naval Personnel. And I told him my aspirations were to command, not to be second in command or third in command, but to command. And I wanted to go to a destroyer. Well, they really had me at that point in time because I'd never been to a destroyer. And the policy was basically that, that if you've never been to a destroyer, you can't go to a destroyer. It's sort of like getting in the submarines. If you've never been aboard a submarine, you can't go to a submarine. You've got to work up as a junior officer in the submarine force. And the destroyer force was that way, too. But then somebody, and it turned out to be my skipper off the Iowa, who was the chief of naval personnel. And it turned out that he discovered the way, and the way was that they established a school or a training program for people who'd who wanted to go to destroyers and who had never been, but who might have been qualified for, could get there. And that is that they send you to a dis destroyer squadron, place you under additional duty to the commanding officer, and you would stay there for three months, six months, or whatever, however long it took. And when he said you were qualified to command a destroyer, then you generally got one. And so one day I look up, and lo and behold, I've got orders to destroy Squadron 7, I guess it was. And I reported aboard, and everybody wondered where I'd come from, as if I dropped out of the woods or something. But, okay, fine. What do you want to do? Well, I had that one planned. I think that uh, if I'm going to train for executive officer destroyer, I ought to ride one of these ships for a while and learn what the other guy who is exec now doing. Go to a few training courses that might specifically qualify for you for the job. And then sooner or later you could say, I'm qualified. Let me handle the ship a couple times. You say, I'm qualified. Go. And so that's the way it went. I rode, let's see, there were eight ships in that squadron, and I rode every one of them, sometime for a day, sometime for a week, and all the pen. But I got a chance to do it. Then when I thought I'd be getting orders to a destroyer, I got orders to another squadron. And the reason was that this guy was deploying, and they didn't want to take any excess baggage along with them on, on their deployment. They needed all their extra bunk. But anyway, instead of staying in Desron 7, I went to Desron 5. It was just another ship like that. And I met a guy who uh, became a friend of mine until today. In fact, he became my roommate on board the, uh, the um, Desron uh, 5 flagship. Just a guy that I I treasure this friendship. In fact, Alma knows his family just as well as I do. But I stayed there for <clears throat> three months. But in the meantime, the skipper came down one day and he said, listen, the only way you're going to learn this ship is to go through it from the bottom to the top. He said, here's a book which shows you the inspection process that the fleet commander excuse me, holes on the ship once a year. And the thing you need to do, now they, they, they put several officers in charge of this book. The thing you need to do is go through this book chapter by chapter. And I went through the dumb thing chapter by chapter. And I, I uh, went through it, found all the correct answers and everything else. And then finally one day I told him, hey, I'm finished the book. And he said, well, fine. I said, uh, don't you think you ought to tell the Bureau that I'm qualified to be exec of the story? Yes, I'll do that. And he did. And believe it or not, the next thing I knew, I got orders which said I'm qualified to be exec of a destroyer. And 
ordered me to the Theodore E. Chandler. And I got to tell you, that was like going to heaven. In fact, that morning, Alma took me down to the pier. And we went down there and sat outside the ship for a few minutes and looked at the beautiful lines on that ship. And that's where I went. Well, it just turned out that this ship was not to be an operating member of the fleet. It was to be a <coughs> ship that was going to Hunters Point, which is in the San Francisco Naval sh Shipyard, for one whole year to be completely modernized. And I saw that bucket cut down from the bridge right straight down till it had nothing but the water line. Everything else was on the deck. And then I saw it being built again. And I worked with that ship. One day, two days, just kept working. And finally, you know, uh, I knew a guy, excuse me for interrupting here, but um, a guy from the Bureau came. In fact, he called me before he came. He said, I'm going to be there on such and such a date. He said, I want to talk to you about your new officers who are coming aboard. I said, fine. And he came aboard and he said, uh, I'm going to send you this guy, send you that guy, this guy. He said, but before we talk, let's talk about you. And I said, uh, about me? I said, what am I doing? He said, well, you are going to commanding officer of the Falcon. And I could have cried. Because that's what I wanted to do, was to go to commanding officer and destroy it. And he went on <clears throat> to say, it's going to be based out of Pearl. It's a DER. It's not exactly what you want, but it'll do the job for you. Yes, sir. And then we went on to talk about the rest of the people. I stayed there then until December of, uh, damn, I don't even know what year it was. But until December, and then I was transferred, and Alma and I and the kids all boarded the ship and went to Pearl, stayed there. And I got there, and my ship was in port. So what the hell's going on here? But I went over to the Commandant's office, and they told me that uh, it would be back in in a couple of days. And I went over there. And I said, lo and behold, there's the gun mount, which should be cocked that way. It was cocked sort of like that. <laughs> well, he'd taken some rough weather, and the first thing I had to do as commanding officer, I relieved him, was to uh, go in the shipyard and get the, get the gun mount over 